Now we are in section seven. And in this section, we are going to learn a new approach uh, to prove an argument or to show the validity of an argument. So uh, this uh, previously we already uh, we already learned direct proof. So this is what's also called indirect proof or proof by contradiction. Or in Latin, it's called uh, reductio ad absurdum. The idea is the following: you deny the conclusion and then show that you reach a contradiction and this contradiction must be if you apply all the inference rules correctly this uh, contradiction must be due to the uh, denial of your conclusion and hence the conclusion must be true all right so that's roughly the idea let's talk about uh, this example and hopefully it's going to be uh, a clearer so consider this uh, argument P implies Q or R not Q and then not R, and therefore not P. So uh, this is a valid argument. If you uh, picture the, if you draw the uh, uh, truth table of this argument, you're going to see that it is uh, a valid argument. Uh, however, let's not do it and let's try to prove it. If you try to prove this uh, with a direct proof method and using all the inference rules that we already learned, you'll see that you're not going to be able to do it. All right. So the trick that we have is therefore proof by contradiction. So how does it go? Uh, well, first off, so what is a con contradiction? What does it mean? A contradiction is the following. When you do a proof in one of the lines, you're going to reach to a conclusion T. So that means sentence T must be correct. And then uh, along the way, as you continue doing your proof, you should reach another uh, statement, argument, not T, is also correct. And so that is a contradiction because I know that a statement and its negation cannot be true at the same time because our sentences are declarative sentences. They're either true or false. They can't be both. They can't be neither. So therefore, if I have any sentence like T and then also not T in my proof, I'm going to conclude that that's a contradiction. And the source of this contradiction should be your denial of the conclusion. All right. So that's the idea. <coughs> I'm sorry. So let's try to prove this. I'm going to note the conclusion here. All right. So that's the conclusion I would like to reach. So I'm going to erase this. Let's number them. One, two, three. So these are premises. I don't write them as premise one, premise two, premise three. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start my proof by denying the conclusion. So what does that mean? That means uh, that not P statement is not true. That means not not P. All right. Uh, my, this is my conclusion. I am denying it, meaning the, the negation of that is true. All right. Assumption for uh, contradiction. Okay. So, line five. I know that this is nothing but double negation. And it's equivalent to P. So if not, not P is true, P must be true. So this is double negation of line four. Very good. What else do I know? Well, because I have P implies Q or R and P is true. Well, then that means by modus ponens, uh, Q or R must be true as well. So this is modus ponens between the arguments one and five. Very good. What else? Because not Q is true and I just shown that Q or R is true, that must mean that uh, R is definitely true. So this is MTP, modus tollens opponents, between the arguments 2 and 6. Very well. Um, what else? I haven't reached a, oh, I did reach a contradiction in fact, because I just got R, but I already know not R. So line eight, 
do the following. Just repeat this line uh, three. All right, repeat line three. So I have a statement saying that the, the sentence R is true. And it says the negation of that sentence is also true. So it's, it's like um, um, the, 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 the world is uh, uh, round. And so it's true. And in a world uh, where uh, the world is not round is also true. So make your decision. Uh, is it true or not? Kind of. All right. So uh, R cannot be a declarative sentence. So that's a contradiction. Very well. So the question is, though, I got a contradiction. What, what does that mean? Once I get a contradiction, that means this sub proof is over. It's done. So I close the box. Well, this not R is just a repetition of the premise. So I, uh, it is correct. Uh, all right. So this can't be the reason for my contradiction. All right. So what about this R? Well, this R is deduced from all my premises and this assumption that not not P is true by using the logical arguments or the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the rules that I have. So if you apply the rules correctly, all right, well, then this argument is actually correct. I mean, true. So this cannot be the reason of the contradiction either. Same for Q uh, and or R, because I used the modus ponens correctly. So if you use, by the way, the rules incorrectly, so because of the human errors, you may reach a contradiction. And that doesn't mean that your proof is true. So in, in this case, your proof is wrong. But here, there's no human error, all right? I used the inference rules correctly, and the premises are, are true. So therefore, they cannot be the source of uh, co contradiction. Again, P here, well, I correctly uh, achieved this conclusion by using the double negation rule. So this cannot be the source of contradiction. These are not the source of the contradiction because they are premises and I know they are true. So everything here is true because this assumption is, uh, I mean, because this is assumed to be true. So you know what? Therefore, there's just one reason. There's just one potential reason where uh, we may reach to this conclusion, uh, contradiction, I mean, and it is because this statement must be false. All right, well, you were wrong. You assumed that not not P is, is true, but it must be false, uh, okay? Um, because otherwise we shouldn't reach a contradiction. So what does that mean, not not P is false? Well, that means uh, not P is true. Remember, uh, not not P is the negation of not P. So if the negation of a sentence is false, well, then just ignore this negation then that sentence must be true. So therefore, not P is true. And this is uh, indirect derivation, thanks to the arguments between 4 to 8. So this is the conclusion I was aiming to get. And this is how we prove by using the uh, indirect uh, uh, derivation method to prove that this argument is a valid argument.